Marhaba, Shabab. Hello, hello, hello. So let's get started with another unit test. So now, as I said, I want to test uh, when we create a unit, uh, when we create a task, when we create a unit test, I want to say. Um, and so let's start. Just I would just copy this thingy here and just adapt the name. When... Creating a task, then expect loading state. Okay. And now we start again with given. And we have to use again core routines every for every call of the mock repository. Uh, when the mock repository calls create task, doesn't matter which kind of argument we give it. So we put any in there, it re should return returns few state loading. Great. And uh, now we can again say object under test. Take the task because it's a single task we are looking for. Observe forever because um, where is it? Here is it. When we call this, what we then get, I mean, here happens the setting of the few state first loading, then to handle response, either few state success or it few state error or something else, and we lock it. But if it's success, then our response is a is a task fetch response. I mean it's wrapped around few state, but yeah. Okay. Observe forever and we say response observer and this is also our response observer is also where is it? <laughs> um, wrapped around few state. Okay. Uh, now let's do again when object under test, uh, create task, we have already a create request globally defined, uh, then we say uh, we have to verify again and we just verify for um, the response observer uh, changed to um, few state loading. And we just confirm that this was executed, confirm verified response observer. Okay. Okay, and let's run this. Now you should see four tests. Okay. That works, that works, that works, but I uh, forget to create a new branch. Let's do this. Let's do this. 28. Great. So, okay, since we have tested our few state loading, now we will check again for few state loading and now for success. Let's do this. And we just let's copy this part. Mm -hmm. We just need one more just curly brace. Okay, I fixed it. And expect success state, of course. And here we say success and task fetch object, uh, fetch response. And which we um, we also check here the live data the live data change we have observe response observer observe forever and then we can call again object under test let's say now create task put again the create request inside of it then then our dem block again first verify and as I said first we say response observer 
dot unchanged it should go to loading and then responsive server unchanged and let's just copy this views to success and we just test if everything got um, um, properly verified and we say and we say response observer that everything here got verified okay let's run this again okay that went as well as successful now let's just copy again the naming let's do expect uh, error state let's start again with given co-every mock repository when create task is called with any kind of argument it should return this time a few state dot error and what we need again is an exception as an argument we have a globally defined mock http exception and now we want to again of course um track if this life that object got changed observe forever with response observer ah, forget the parentheses now it's good to go now we can do the when block again object under test create task create request okay then last but not least we verify Response observer first, of course, it goes through few state loading. Then it should come to few state error and, and copy again this. Make sure everything ran, went through. If confirm verified, response observer. Okay. Let's run again all tests. And this was successful. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thanks to God. So what we can do now is we can say uh, here, doesn't matter where you click here or here. Uh, with coverage, run tests with coverage. And we now want to see if we cover our implemented lines of code with our tests uh, now we go to to our folder structure com with example this is from airbnb don't look into it um, this is for epoxy stuff and we wrote tests for repository here you see all the lines are covered all these uh, yellowish class names they are generated ignore them and if you if you ever use jacoco you can um, um, set up jacoco in your build.gradle file in the not in not in the um, settings build.gradle where is it here is it should be yeah here if you define here jacoco you can say what to ignore and for instance, now take a look, task repository. We did it two videos before. Here's everything green, here's everything covered. And you see classes, method, and lines, which are covered. Now to our view model. And our view model is, ex of course, less. We just expect uh, that the lines are covered for get task by ID and create task. So take a look. And of course, the handle response. Uh, just wait just a minute close of the rest of the other ones you see we didn't wrote any tests for fetch tasks so it's red but we wrote tests for ta tasks by id copy this here we have it tuck 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 bam, bam, bam. okay okay 
and this is green of course and then of course we did also create task it's also green and delete task is red didn't wrote tests yet and you see we also covered this kind of stuff here and yeah so basically that's it and you see here with the lines covered and so on and by end of this tutorial in also in this part 28 branch i will add the remaining tests for fetch tasks uh, fetch tasks delete task update task and so should be 100 percent or so um 100 percent for the methods for the lines of code it, it will not be i mean this should actually uh, i'm wondering why this is green because we didn't test the else case but yeah it is what it is don't always rely on coverage um but of course you should write unit tests to make sure you you have not spaghetti code um i think in the previous video i just said something wrong about encapsulation and so on you should encapsulate but um you you want to avoid spaghetti code you don't want to um you don't want a code base where you change one single thing that has um some kind of um uses um and leads to errors somewhere completely else where you don't expect it and you don't have a overview where things are um used and so on so it makes sure you write precise code for what you need and if so you can easily unit test it and yes that's that's the thing about unit testing and if you do refactoring and you have to do refactoring sooner or later um you can run the unit test see okay where it breaks or if 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 it doesn't break that's great but yes that's the thing um that's why you should always write unit tests don't always r rely on coverage the more coverage you have like 70 or 80 percent is more than enough i think for the most projects i would say from my per professional experience but also if you write tests that don't cover anything doesn't matter these tests are obsolete because maybe these tests are covering some edge cases i also had these things and when you delete unit tests make sure you're not deleting tests which are testing some kind of edge cases and yeah because when you delete those and you do refactoring and then you go to production bad things can happen bad errors can occur so that's basically it we are done with this tutorial series this is the last video where we do actually something i will just do one more video where we wrap up some things and give you an outlook about the next tutorial series uh surprise surprise it will be about future yes. um yeah so i hope you learned something uh mabruk to all of you who watched all 28 videos by now and yeah see you soon don't forget to write me some comments like and subscribe and you know the drill stay tuned